If there exist enigmatic creatures hidden in our world, Congo is considered their most likely home. About half of this country is cloaked in dense, flora-rich tropical forests, an ideal place for unseen entities to dwell. In this video, we'll explore the most spine-chilling findings from Congo. Sit back and prepare for a thrill. Cobalt, a highly sought-after mineral used for heat-resistant, super-hard, and other coatings, is abundant in the Democratic Republic of Congo (DRC), the world's top producer. However, the appalling conditions under which it is extracted are often overlooked. Thousands of Congolese people have migrated to remote regions, lured by the promise of well-paid jobs. But cobalt mining has become a modern form of slavery, with only the mine owners reaping significant profits. An estimated 30% of the minerals are sourced from small-scale mines notorious for human rights abuses. Amid scorching heat, children labor, and many suffer injuries or lose their lives in hazardous underground tunnels. Consequently, human rights organizations are growing increasingly worried about companies engaged in mineral extraction without proper machinery, flouting safety protocols. Unfortunately, halting this production isn't straightforward. The majority of Congolese people live in abject poverty and are willing to risk their health for any source of income. Darwin's theory of evolution posits that humans evolved from monkeys over a long process. We share the most common traits with chimpanzees, with over 375 distinct species identified. The average height of a male chimp is approximately 150 centimeters, but in Congo, far larger specimens exist. In 2003, National Geographic reported a groundbreaking discovery of a new species of chimpanzees. The creatures, found in the Bili Forest in northern Congo, resembled a hybrid of gorillas and chimpanzees. These colossal chimps can grow up to 180 centimeters tall, possess immense strength, and are even capable of killing lions. The billy chimps, with their gorilla-like physique, stand on two legs and make their nests on the ground, not in trees. Despite this, they don't cohabitate with gorillas and their dietary habits align more closely with chimpanzees. The first scientist to encounter these creatures was primate ecologist Shelley Williams. She recalled an encounter where four huge male primates came close to her, appearing ready to attack. Instead, they studied her carefully and then left. Interestingly, locals have noticed that the behavior of billy chimps is different from other primates. While male chimps are usually aggressive when encountering humans, billy chimps observe hunters closely before retreating, as if acknowledging them as kin. Currently, scientists are studying these chimps intensively, pondering various theories about their origin. They could be giant variants of chimpanzees, gorilla chimp hybrids, or perhaps a new species of great apes. If the latter, their discovery would be a monumental zoological breakthrough of the 21st century. Congolese legends speak of a fearsome reptile inhabiting the swamps near Lake Likawala. According to the stories, this terrifying creature measures up to 15 meters long and hides in the marshes, leaping out to ambush its prey with its giant jaws. Locals insist that this creature, known as Muhammad, doesn't resemble any known animals or reptiles. Cryptologists, based on detailed descriptions, speculate that Muhammad could be a freshwater descendant of the presumed extinct mosasaurs. Others posit that this monster could be an offshoot of prehistoric crocodiles, like Dinosuchus or Sarcosuchus. While no one has ever seen Muhammad, the indigenous Bobangi tribe firmly believes it inhabits specific areas of Likawala, and they avoid those areas at all costs. Megaliths can be found across the globe, with Stonehenge in England being the most famous site. Africa, too, boasts astonishing patterns of giant stones spread across its landscapes. The origins and purposes of megaliths remain shrouded in mystery. Scientists are often astounded by the fact that these were built during an era of the most rudimentary tools, which makes their construction seem nearly impossible. Consequently, megaliths are frequently linked with extraterrestrial civilizations. Nonetheless, there is still an absence of solid evidence to substantiate this theory. Thus, the question of where these complex structures originated from continues to perplex modern-day humans. In 1959, Belgian Colonel Remy van Leerd encountered a snake whose existence is challenging to accept. This event occurred when Leerd was soaring above the jungles in the Katanga region, inside a helicopter. Upon returning to the airbase, the colonel detailed the snake's appearance. Its back and sides were a mix of green and brown, while the belly exhibited a milky hue. Most remarkably, the estimated length of this reptile, according to Leard, was around 15 meters. Upon witnessing the snake of such immense size, the colonel was left in disbelief. He commanded the pilot to make another pass over the creature. 
When the helicopter approached the snake again, it elevated its head to a height of at least three meters, as though cautioning of a potential attack. At this juncture, the colonel demanded an instant return to the base. Using an onboard camera, he successfully captured images of this Titan, offering proof of its existence. After a careful analysis of the photographs, scientists hypothesized that the snake could be either a mutated giant African rock python, a new species of snake inhabiting areas inaccessible to humans, or it might be a descendant of an ancient Eocene snake. The images of this snake further demonstrate that the tropical forests of Congo are home to numerous enigmatic creatures. It's plausible that certain animal species, extinct millions of years ago, have managed to survive in this region. In the mid-19th century, travelers circulated stories about the world's largest gorillas inhabiting the mountainous regions of Congo. However, it was only in 1902 that German captain Oscar von Berenga first encountered these primates. Subsequently, this primate species was named Baringa gorillas. Baringa gorillas grow up to 2 meters tall and weigh over 200 kilograms. Due to limited knowledge about these primates, scientists exerted every effort to gain a better understanding of them. The habitat of these gorillas was confined to the inaccessible slopes of six dormant volcanoes in the Virunga mountain range. Studying Baringa gorillas presented extreme challenges, and it became even more arduous following the onset of the Civil War in 1967. However, American primatologist Diane Fossey resolved to continue researching these primates. She also spearheaded numerous conservation endeavors to protect gorillas from poachers. Tragically, she was murdered by poachers in 1953. Thanks to Diane Fossey, the rare species of Barange gorillas were preserved and now dwell exclusively in a national park in Uganda and the Virunga Volcanic Mountains. Their population counts around 1,000 individuals, and their existence remains endangered. The people of Congo acknowledge the existence of another fearsome creature known as Zaire or Dinganek. According to Congolese folklore, this monster inhabits the rivers and lakes of West Africa. The dingo net grows up to 3.5 meters in height and possesses a square head with a long horn, formidable fangs, a saber-like tail with a venomous stinger at the tip, and its skin is fortified with tough scales exhibiting a leopard-like pattern. The dengonic fiercely safeguards its territory, attacking crocodiles, hippos, and even humans. In addition to legends, there exists a documented account of an encounter with this creature resembling a manticore. In 1907, African explorer John Alfred Jordan heard tales about the Dinga Neck. Initially skeptical, he was offered a chance by local inhabitants to investigate the Magori River. It was there that Jordan observed the actual monster emerging from the water. The explorer described it as a creature about four meters long, armored in scales with a lengthy tail, furnished with fangs and tusks. Upon seeing it, Jordan immediately thought of walruses. The encounter terrified the explorer compelling him to shoot the Dengonic in the neck, after which the creature vanished into the water. Terrified, the locals fled the area and never returned. Italian filmmaker and explorer Attilio Godi was deeply captivated by African culture. He studied not only Congo's natural environment, but also the culture of its indigenous people thoroughly. Gotti holds the distinction of being the first person to film a documentary featuring Africans. He immersed himself so profoundly in the indigenous society that he became one of them. He was told legends, allowed to partake in festivities and hunting, and he even took photographs. The most iconic photograph shows Gotti alongside pygmy hunters and a captured gorilla. Throughout his scientific career in Africa, he compiled a collection of 35,000 photographs, made a film, and authored 30 books about the country. One day, the Africans informed Gotti about certain caves, descending into which was considered extremely dangerous. According to the local folklore, malevolent spirits inhabit these caves, slaughtering any unwanted guest. This story deeply intrigued Gotti and his team. However, when they were scheduled to embark on an expedition to verify if the caves were indeed associated with mysticism, the explorer fell ill. Consequently, it was decided that his team would enter the cave instead. Surprisingly, none of those who entered ever returned. What transpired inside remains a mystery, but following the incident, Gotti resolved never to test the stories of the Congolese people again. I've often spoken about the extraordinary sizes of Congo's inhabitants, which are infrequently cited. Now let's explore the largest insects found in Congo. We'll begin with the Goliath beetle, one of the world's largest beetles. 
Adult Goliath beetles can expand up to 11.5 centimeters, with their weight ranging between 50 to 100 grams. Now, for an unusual yet awe-inspiring sight, the larva of this beetle, the giant African millipede. This millipede, unlike its centipede counterpart, poses no threat to humans and is entirely non-aggressive. Interestingly, the millipede adapts well to captivity and swiftly becomes tame. However, not many people would care to handle such a creature due to its repulsive appearance. Among the diplopod millipedes, the giant African millipede holds the record with a body length of 38.5 centimeters and a thickness of 2 centimeters. Congo also houses the giant praying mantis, which can grow up to 17 centimeters in length. I imagine that very few of you would fancy a close encounter with these insects in the tropics. In the small town of Manono in the Tanganyika province, locals have discovered unique stones. According to them, these minerals possess an inherent electrical potential. To validate their unique discovery, they began filming videos that quickly spread across the internet, going viral. The videos demonstrate intense sparks when the stones are rubbed together, akin to welding. In another video, an individual manages to illuminate a light bulb using one of these extraordinary stones. All of the discovered stones are dark colored and have a glossy surface. They likely comprise an unstudied mineral. Some users have even speculated that these stones are real-world vibranium, the imaginary metal from Marvel Comics used to manufacture Captain America's shield and Black Panther's suit. Presently, scientists maintain that these videos are doctored, as minerals are not capable of releasing the electrons required for storing and generating a charge. However, these stones have not been exhaustively examined yet, and it's plausible that the residents of Congo have indeed unearthed an unknown mineral. Another enigmatic creature believed to exist by the Congolese is called Emelantuka, According to local inhabitants, it's a massive freshwater beast akin to a rhinoceros, with a bulky body and a tremendous horn capable of killing elephants and other large animals with a single strike. Unlike a rhinoceros, Emela Antuka has a relatively extended neck surrounded by crocodile-like folds. The initial reports of this fantastic creature appeared in 1913, when explorer Hans Schoenberg gathered stories from the Claw tribe in Liberia and subsequently published an article dedicated to the remarkable Emela Antuka. In the early 21st century, a Congo resident asserted to have slain a specimen of this unknown species and preserved its horn as a keepsake. Following this, a documentary film about the elusive Emela and Tuka was produced. Despite being a herbivore, the creature killed anything that crossed its path. For instance, a dead elephant was found near the Claw Tribe settlement, its side impaled by something sharp. The locals believe it was an Emela and Tuka victim. According to the descriptions provided by the Claw Tribe, this mysterious elephant killer closely resembles herbivorous dinosaurs from the Ceratopsid family that lived during the Cretaceous period. Cryptozoologists think that some members of this family survived to present day and conceal themselves in Congo's dense forests. Terrifyingly enormous spiders are often depicted in horror films and video games. Imagine if such two-meter monstrosities actually existed. The Baka tribe of Congo asserts that creatures they term Jabafofi, which translates to giant spider, inhabit their woods. Jabafofi garnered recognition in 2008 after a mention in the Monster Quest series. However, their existence has been speculated since the late 19th century. In 1890, missionary Arthur Sims, who was exploring Lake Nyasa with his team, observed a web of exceptional size, suspected to belong to a significantly large spider. Sims and his team decided to examine the sticky web more closely, and in doing so, several individuals became ensnared. Instantly, numerous monstrous spiders, each over 100 centimeters tall, descended from the forest canopy and attacked the team. Another encounter with the Jubba Fofi occurred in 1938. The Lloyd couple was driving through a forest road in Zimbabwe when they observed a spider the size of a large cat. The creature resembled a gigantic tarantula, but had longer legs. In 1980, researcher William Gibbons took interest in the Congo spiders and embarked on an expedition. He spoke with Baka tribe representatives who assured him of the spider's existence and provided further details. It appears that Jabba Fofi are brown spiders, measuring between 100 to 120 centimeters. They inhabit caves, spin webs in the forests, and trap small mammals and birds as prey. Their eggs, the size of peanuts, hatch into small yellow and purple individuals. According to the Baca tribe, the spiders pose a significant danger, and their nests are always destroyed, leading to a severely diminished Jabba Fofi population. 
Around 243 million years ago, our planet was populated by ancient animals, dinosaurs, which included over 1,000 species. Between the Triassic and Jurassic periods, about 201 million years ago, all dinosaurs became extinct. The exact cause of their mass extinction remains unknown, with hypotheses ranging from climate change to the impact of a giant asteroid. Today, our knowledge of dinosaurs comes solely from various informational sources. However, what if some species survived and we could observe them directly? Legends of various cultures narrate tales of creatures closely resembling dinosaurs, such as the Loch Ness Monster and Ogopogo. Congo's inhabitants also believe in a similar entity named Mokele Mbembe, translating to the one that stops the flow of rivers. According to locals, the Mbembe resides in Lake Tele and its surroundings. It is active during daytime, feeding on ripe fruits and leaves, and retreats to the lake's depths at night. Despite its herbivorous nature, Mokele Mbembe is not friendly and displays aggression towards any perceived threats. Hence, people have feared encountering it for a long time. However, numerous eyewitnesses claim to have seen this creature. According to their accounts, Mokele Mbembe possesses smooth brown-gray skin, is the size of an adult elephant, has a very long neck, a large tooth or horn, and a long alligator-like tail. Various expeditions have searched for this mysterious species, but to no avail, even though large tracks have indeed been discovered on the shores of Lake Tele. Interestingly, when shown images of different animals and dinosaurs, the locals identified sauropods as Mokele Mbembe, leading cryptozoologists to conjecture that Mokele Mbembe might be the sole dinosaur species to have survived until the present day. Unquestionably, it's peculiar to believe that large flying dinosaurs have survived and remain so well hidden that there's no evidence of their existence. Nevertheless, Congo's people firmly believe in the presence of ancient creatures in their forests, one of which they call Kongamato. In the local dialect, Kongamato translates to overwhelmer of boats. According to legend, these enormous flying creatures with wingspans between four to seven meters inhabit areas near swamps and rivers. They display aggression and attack when they sight fishermen. The first recorded encounter with this creature occurred in 1932. According to American zoologist Yvonne Sanderson, he was assaulted by a monster with teeth. Astonishingly, he managed to escape by leaping into a river and firing his revolver at the creature. However, the flying entity was impervious to the bullets and simply took off, clearly startled. In 1956, Engineer Brown recounted an encounter with two airborne creatures near Lake Bangwulu, currently located in Zambia. From a distance, they appeared like giant eagles but had heads and tails unlike any bird. As per his account, these odd entities had long, slender tails and elongated heads. According to stories shared by local residents, in 1957, a patient with a severe chest injury was brought to the hospital in Fort Rosebury. Later, the man revealed to the doctors that he was assaulted by a real monster, equipped with large wings, teeth, and claws in the Bangwulu swamps, unlike anything he had previously seen. When asked to illustrate the creature, he drew something akin to a pterosaur. There is no solid evidence confirming the existence of Kongamato, but based on eyewitness accounts, cryptozoologists speculate that these individuals may have encountered descendants of pterosaurs. That wraps up everything for the moment. If you found this video enjoyable, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell. Your interaction is the greatest reward for me. Thank you for your attention, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Goodbye.